KPIX 5 Susie Steimel live in Golden Gate Park with a look at events that are planned this weekend. Susie? And this is one of them, Alan and Liz. These are 350 sculptures that were just unveiled at Golden Gate Park today. They're encircling what used to be a statue of Francis Scott Key that was toppled by protesters in the summer of last year. This is just one of the ways that the public can come out and commemorate and educate themselves about Juneteenth. Well, some people don't realize that Juneteenth is America's story. They think it's solely a black story. This is a story of all America. When Dave Peters first heard the news that Congress passed a bill to make Juneteenth a federal holiday, he says he was shocked. It's kind of overwhelming. Juneteenth recognizes June 19th, 1865, two years after the signing of the Emancipation Proclamation and two months after the end of the Civil War, when Union soldiers finally made it to Galveston, Texas to tell enslaved people they were free. So think about that. For more than two years, the enslaved people of Texas we're kept in servitude. Oakland will be throwing a barbecue celebration Saturday, but Dave also organized a self-guided audio walking tour of Oakland. The tour begins at St. Augustine's Church, where the Black Panthers gathered for meetings, and ends at the historic California Hotel that was once segregated, but allowed black artists to play. I am conflicted about um, calling it a celebration, a celebratory holiday. I think it needs to be a commemoration. In San Francisco, former KPIX anchor and now sculptor Dana King created 350 sculptures to represent the first 350 slaves who were brought to this country on that first ship. 25 survived. The installation will be here for two years, surrounding the former statue of Francis Scott Key, a slaveholder who wrote the Star Spangled Banner. This is a monumental reckoning in name and in, in, in philosophy. Things will never change unless those who are unaffected are as outraged as those who are affected. Author Will Shelton is releasing a book on Juneteenth that coaches black men and women on rising the ranks of corporate America. He says Juneteenth likely wouldn't have been recognized as a federal holiday if it weren't for the murder of George Floyd. We were all in the same valley of suffering together. The sand was shifting underneath all of us at the same time. He's happy to see white America recognizing this day and hopes people will take time for celebration and education. They can take the time to really find out what this day really means to us and how they can support it. Wonderful. Come on out, folks. We're going to have a good old time. Say it loud. I'm black and I'm proud. <laughs> Dana says when she was first commissioned to do this artwork, she initially wanted to cover the plinth entirely, almost to suffocate the racist past associated with this statue. But the city of San Francisco said no. They're still trying to figure out what to do with public art like this. She said that no, though, was motivation for her to make this 350 times more powerful. Mm -hmm. Alan. Absolutely.